and these are people who are in the actual music industry, yep. right? They, they, that's what they do for a living. They say things like, well, Ed, here's, here's the thing about you. You know, you're very interesting because you live in an area where artists who come out of Minnesota don't have any resources. Mm -hmm. And I agree with that for the most part, yep. because you got to think when you're anyone who's been, you know, the artists who do travel like myself and they've done shows in other cities and stuff like that, the energy and the support you receive is completely different mm -hmm. in places like Atlanta, New York, mm -hmm. uh, the list goes on and on, yep. LA, yep. Where, what we, there's a reason, right? They look at us and this is going to hurt a lot of people's feelings, but this is what people tell me. You see I'm Southside rapping. This guy flow perfection. Yeah. Dating on the church like I ain't blessed. They section. If we ain't talking money, I got a weak connection. That's on the hood. She said get a bag, so I get it, got it good. Don't complain about my problems. I just put it in a wood. Seen a genie the other day. She said make it good. So I wish for good health. Then I wish to look at sheep, not lieutenant. Uh, own your own recording studio, which I also got. That's something else I did because I was paying for studio time for a long time. And it's like, that's cool. And it's not that I have an issue with paying for studio time. It's that that limits my progress hmm. because I'm on someone else's time. I have to pay to practice. Yeah. So like, I got to pay to practice. Let's have this continuous conversation. Let me introduce you. Oh, yeah. Let me introduce you. Yeah. Another episode of Live on Lake Street. We got Ed Stark in the building. You've already heard. You've already heard quite a bit, but OG Ed Stark. But let's I'm continue. Let's continue the conversation though. So continue on that on this thought. You, you, I don't know if you lost your train of thought. I might have. No, 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 no. Okay, so where was I going? Where was I going? Help me. Um, you were saying basically that you know you like to build things and and you're you're always kind of immersed in what you're doing, so immersed in what you're doing that you might not be paying attention to what's going on around and at one point you kind of looked up things have changed absolutely and that's what landed me here i looked up and i'm like oh shit you know what i'm saying it's popping yeah like it's, it's popping pop it. yeah like, and i need to you know what i'm saying yeah you know because i was spending time you know maybe i'll go to that coast this coast go on that show this show link up with these people tapping in yep. and that is part of the game yep. that's a very important part of the game part of the game i'm good at and that i've been uh i've dedicated a lot of my time and energy and money towards yeah but then I turn around and it's like my backyard grew yeah. without me. And so like, okay, let's hop back in, Yeah, you know? Yep. And I'll even say that's with the battle scene because just a little like uh, history, right? I started doing battle rap first. Okay. So if, uh, some of the guys will recognize me from that. You know what I'm saying? I yeah. was doing that prior to 2019. Who were, you, who were you battling? Like, were you battling here? Yeah. Who were some of the people you were battling with? Uh, Who's battling then? Uh, who did I battle? So, um, New Money. He's a dude out of St. Cloud. Because okay. I don't know how many of these people are still still active either. Yeah. Yep. I just saw Infrared the General. I never battled him, but I um, came up at the same time that he came up. Okay. He stayed doing battle rap. I didn't, <clears throat> for example. So, I'm from that era. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, BX who goes by, I think, Vince Jules or something like that yep. now. I know Vince Jules. Uh-huh. Um, who else was around? There's a lot of people. Of course, I'm blanking on the names. Pre or Prey, I battled him. Okay. Uh, what's the big dude name? Shit. We have a battle scene here. We do. I mean, I don't know if we still do, but I know we, it, we, had, we definitely did. We do. I was just at a battle. And that's why I seen infrared. But it's funny because he was the only cat from my Wait, was era. That, was that the trap right battle? Yeah, you were at that. Yeah, that's right. I saw you in a video. Yeah, you did. On my mama. Yeah, that's I stand right. out. Yeah, <laughs> I stand out. You didn't rap though. No, 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 no. You were just there. I was just there because actually I had something else going on, and my homie hit me like, "Hey, come to this battle with yeah. me." And it's right in my backyard, yeah. West Side, one hundred and seven. Yeah. We yeah. right there. So I, I pull up, like, yeah. What do you think about the event? You were there live. Give me a, give me some feedback. Give me a breakdown. What okay. Was it like? And here's a perfect example. Again, going back to what I just talked about, I quit battle rapping because I felt at that time that that wasn't the best avenue for my, you know, time and attention and skill, whatever, right? And then now seeing this after it's been some years, I will say um, they got a lot more sophisticated with it as far as the way they run the event, mm -hmm. 
they have security. Mm-hmm. We never had security. Yeah. You know, they actually pat you down, check you for weapons, all that. That's, that's these are all good things. Yeah. And I mean, big dude. They even had like two dudes bigger than me. It's hard to find <laughs> motherfuckers bigger than me. Okay. Yeah. So they had that on lock, and then they had their equipment. You know, they had not one cameraman with the camera. They had multiple cameras yep. from multiple angles with lights. Yeah. Uh, with a DJ uh, with the turntables and the computers. So they were, I think, doing it live. So it got more sophisticated. Mm-hmm. The setup and the structure. And they made you pay to get in, which is a good thing for the scene. Yeah. Um, you can't convince me otherwise. And all of that was good and great. Now, here, here's where the constructive criticism, uh, criticism comes in. Say that it. lies with us. <laughs> say it. You got to say that it. That lies with the artists, no. not with the organizers, because I believe like half the battlers didn't show up. Right. Which is the same shit. I think it was just two, but... Well, but if there were only two battles on the card, that's every battle. Yeah. Right? And so that is very reminiscent of what I experienced back... You would set up these events, go through all this trouble, and you didn't have a lot of resources. You didn't have money to pay all these people. You didn't have venues. You had to come up with the money just to pay the venue people. Then you had to get the people to come and all this. And then the artists didn't either practice or show up. Yeah. So my only constructive criticism actually doesn't lie with uh, whoever was running that event. I thought it was well put together. I thought the issue was just where it's been since my time was with the consistency and seriousness and dedication and professionalism of the artists. Yeah. So. Yeah, and I think, unfortunately, I don't know who the the other artist that didn't show up was. I know Akita was supposed to be there, and she didn't show up. Right, and it's not a diss towards her. No, no, no. I don't, don't, you know, it's just. just, We just interviewed her. um, Right. I think she had there was she had a re, she had a good reason I believe to not show up, but right. unfortunately, she would have probably been the highlight. Okay. Out of all, because I watched the I watched the battle most of it anyways. Yeah. And like, that's the part of the problem is when you set a battle with somebody, mm-hmm. your opponent's preparing for you. And right. When you don't show up. Right. It, yeah. And then they got to battle somebody else. It's not going to be what it could have been. And I'll say one other thing, and this is this isn't like a. Don't at me about it. This is just a personal opinion. Stop trying to freestyle. Stop going off the head. Stop. Unless, because you, unless you can really do it, don't do it. No. Yes. No. If you're not Daylight or Eminem, I don't want to hear it. Yeah. You know, I don't, I don't want to hear it. I don't, um, I don't even really want to hear from them, to be honest. Uh, well, <laughs> like, yeah. So it's like, it's, it, just, just write it. Just yeah. practice. Yeah. Just, you know, you have all these resources that um, maybe some of us didn't, didn't have at that time. Yep. So you have this pre-made platform yeah all you got to do is show up yeah utilize it yeah but utilize it correctly stop freestyling i agree freestyling is something that just don't do it it's a rare breed people yeah. that, the people that can do it well rare yeah. rare 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 if you ask me to freestyle right now i'd be like no my music's on spotify right, right. <laughs> not because i can't or whatever we can freestyle when we're kicking it yeah but that's not like content that i'm gonna promote man you want to hear the song go hear the song Let's talk a little bit about your music. So you, yeah. uh, you know, your track, your track record, mm-hmm. as far as your albums go, yeah, a lot of big features, a yeah. lot of big. We features. do everything big, man. Yeah. That's yes. Um, I got a couple songs with Boosie, a couple songs with some Boosie the Goat, a couple songs with um, FBG Duck. May yeah. he rest in power. Yeah. Um, I've worked with Casanova, Free Cass, Styles P, Sheik Luch, um. Nisha Nache, Yauda, Stali, um, Muja, so local people too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The, uh, King Louis. Yeah. I got a EP with Billionaire Black coming out in like a month. So like I'm moving. I'm moving and grooving. Yeah. Um. And, you know, <laughs> so I, I feel like a lot of people watching this or who are gonna watch this is probably gonna be like. If he got all these features, how come I never heard a dude? You know, and because I get that a lot. It's a decent question, though. No, it is. It is. And yeah. I ain't mad about it. But I, and that's that, that's that's part of why I'm here, too. So I can share my mentality and, and my strategy because because I, I straight up, if you ask me, what's your strategy for success in music? I tell you, it's not a secret. I'm not afraid someone's going to hear it. Let's talk about Lizzo just for a quick second. 
because she's either from here or claims to be from here or something like that, right? She got her start here. She got her... Okay, she, well... She was found here, basically. Okay, so that's cool. But um, she blew up, like, 2019, 2020, right? Mm -hmm. And she's a superstar, megastar, yeah. international. Mm -hmm. That song that catapulted her, yeah. that Truth Hurts, yeah. when did that come out? I think it was 2016 or 17. On my mama, it did. Yeah. So what does that say? You gotta work. You gotta work shit for a while. This is something I've been preaching for a long time. You can't just drop and then promote for two weeks and then move on. When so, you're when you're an underground artist, when you're Drake, you can do that. Right. It's gonna sell itself. Even right. he don't do that. Even he'll still push it though. But right. Yeah. When you're an underground artist. Right. You have to work your music. You do. Over and over, because you never know. You never know. And when I said I'm a builder, yeah. right, I feel like I'm building the infrastructure. And that has a lot to do with actually building my body of work yeah. and actually tapping in with people in their cities. Mm -hmm. And then when those people come to me, right, I went to Boosie Crib. Boosie came to mine. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, and, and that's all over the map. I'm doing that with all types of big artists. Yeah. I'm not doing that because I expect this song or that song to blow up. If it does, it does. Cool. But I'm doing that because that's the foundation. For sure. That's the resume. Yep. Because what I'm doing or what I did two years ago mm -hmm. could pop off next year or in six months. Sure. Because I haven't had my so-called 15 minutes of fame. I'm not on in the sense that everybody in my city knows my name. Everybody, you know, nationally knows my name. But that's that's okay yeah. because I'm doing the work and I'm confident in what I'm doing and what I got going on. If I had, and, and this is something that I do communicate to the younger uh, artists right here at home, if you already had your 15 minutes, and what I mean by that, uh, if you had a video or a song that went viral, millions of views on YouTube, right, and you still ain't got no money, You drop the bag. Or whoever you was fucking with, who you put in charge of your affairs, drop the bag. Yeah. And there's no guarantees that you going to get that again. That's true. So the way you, I approach you sound like it. You, you sound like you're talking about somebody specific. No. No? No. All right. No, it's, it's more about, um, no, that's not what it is. It's more that, like, when you look at what Ed Stark do, and it's like, hey, he doing this, he doing that. So then I look at with the maybe the the younger or the new. I I don't, I don't even want to say younger, the newer yep. artists. Yeah. Because I've only been making music since 2019. Yeah. But everything I do is official. So, the quality, you know, the biz, the way the business is conducted, mm -hmm. like even here, right? I came here. This is a very secure facility. Yep. That's part of being professional. Yes. Right. Yeah. So we're talking about all the little things. All that shit adds up. For that, sure. that goes towards your reputation yes. as a business person within the industry. Mm -hmm. So my goal is not to be King Clout, right? My goal is to make money in the industry. Yeah. But that means I have to be in the industry. You might need to be Prince Clout. Well, these, these, well, da these days. Right, I mean, you right, gotta, right. You, these days it feels like you got to do – you got to at least be willing to do some – funny shit, some type of shit to get you, I mean, some gimmicks, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> it seems like you kind of have to, like you kind of have to. Maybe that's debatable. It's hard. It's hard to quote unquote, get on mm -hmm. without. But that also depends on your definition of getting on. True. Because that's why I put it in quotes. Cause, right. What you, yeah. right, right. What you trying to do? Does get on mean you get signed by a major label? Cause you can get signed and get your little piece of fame, which is your 15 minutes. Yeah. And get a thirty thousand dollar advance, boy. Mom, you make more money working at Walmart. For you sure. see what I'm saying? For sure. So, so everyone knows your name. That don't pay the bills. Right. So, what is your definition of getting on? Plus, if and, you don't, if you don't recoup that advance, you owe it. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, so that's not like your paycheck. That's a that's a loan. It's a loan. It's yeah. a bank. The yeah. the the labels are just banks. Yeah. And what a lot of people don't understand is if the label wants you, that's a sign that you should not be fucking with them. Because that means by the time a label wants you, you don't need a label, period. Hmm. 
So why would anyone in this day and age with all the information we have from the people who've been there, done that, still, to your point, do the antics and do the clown and do the buffoonery just to get the attention of a label? Why? So you can be famous? That's not going to feed your kids. I mean, I, I think you're right on some level, but the only, again, the only argument or pushback I would give you on that is there are people out here, I said this in another episode recently, that there are people out here that are really in the trenches Mm -hmm. trying to change their life and their family's life and sometimes that's really all it takes. Somebody comes and offers you an advance, it's like we're broke, we're hungry. I'm going to take that. And you can't be, you know, you can't be mad at that. I can't be mad at that. Like it may hurt you in the long run, but that's the thing is like you can sign to a label Mm -hmm. and get that advance, but then you got to be willing to do the fucking work. You can't just keep doing what you were doing to get there. You got to up the level. And to go back to what you were talking about before, there's something I wanted to comment on. If a label came and found you today mm-hmm. and said, hey, we like that song you did with Boosie, right? That's, right. Your, that's your most recent release. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 10. Check it out. It's so we ten. like So we like that. Mm-hmm. We'd like to see what else you got. We'd like to see you come do more. Well, now A&Rs, label execs, people are looking at your back catalog. Right. And they're going to see, right. oh, he's already got work with some of the hitters. Oh, my mama, because I have, built that. You gotta have that. Yeah. And that's gonna look good for you. That right. label is gonna be like, even, oh, right. I'm even more intrigued now. That's right. part of building a catalog. And that's part of why, like you hear artists say, oh, we just made a slap. We just made a hit. We got a hit. And then it's like, if it don't hit the second they drop, they move on. It's like, if you got a hit, push, yeah. go. Like push, push, Because it's going to take a few years for that hit to go global. And every time you share that song or get somebody else to share that song, that's one, two, three, four more people that had never heard it before. Mm-hmm. And like you said, even like you said earlier, you kind of looked up and shit had changed. Yeah. And there's probably a whole bunch of artists out here that have got a movement that you were like, oh, who's that? He's doing shit over here. Cool. How many people out there you think uh, out there that are like you that just oh, found sorry. out about Live on Lake Street? Oh, just found sense, a, oh, I took just, a, I took a different meaning to the question, but yeah, okay, just, in that just, sense. Just found out about uh uh John Ray. Just found out about you know what I mean? Like somebody Taylor J. Just found out. Like there's plenty of people that are still finding out about these artists that have a buzz. And it's just if you keep pushing, mm-hmm. you gotta you gotta get the you gotta it's like grabbing the it's like a Mario grabbing the coins. Right. You gotta keep grabbing the coins, you gotta keep going. Right. Yeah. So um I don't I don't remember exactly what my point was there, but um, well, we were talking about labels. Yeah, earlier, I mean, even now, you know, when I talk to my uh, East Coast buddies, for yeah. example, mm-hmm. right, um, and these are people who are in the actual music industry, yep. right? They, they, that's what they do for a living. They say things like, well, Ed, here's, here's the thing about you. You know, you're very interesting because you live in an area where artists who come out of Minnesota don't have any resources. Mm -hmm. And I agree with that for the most part, because you got to think when you're anyone who's been, you know, the artists who do travel like myself and they've done shows in other cities and stuff like that, the energy and the support you receive is completely different. Mm -hmm. In places like Atlanta, New York, uh, the list goes on and on, L.A., what what there's a reason, right? They look at us, and this is gonna hurt a lot of people's feelings, but this is what people tell me. So I'm just, I'm, I'm just sharing my feedback from the larger hip hop community yep. that Minnesota is no different than North Dakota, hmm. right? Yeah. You go down to Atlanta and you talking to them girls, and you're like, "Where you from? Minneapolis, St. Paul?" They'd be like, "What?" Cornfield. And this, this is, this is real life shit. My cousin went down to go fuck with his cousin in Atlanta, right? Yeah. I ain't going to put the business out like that. but and, and, and he stopped telling girls he was from Minnesota. He said he was from the rack because he had to put that on or the perception is you're just lame. He's an artist? Oh, uh, yeah. Well, no, hold on. But not, he wasn't repping it like that. I'm saying he was just trying to get some ass. Okay. You know, you get what yeah. I'm saying? Like yeah. just bar hopping, whatever. Yep. But And they'd be like, he's a new face. You'd be like, where are you from? I'm yeah. from Minnesota. And it's like, Shh. right? And that hurts my feelings too. But that's the way it is, and a lot of times we forget that when we're here. And I know a lot of people here probably ain't going to like me saying that, but that is the, that's the feedback I get from people who are in bigger scenes. Yeah. And if you do have connections to bigger scenes, you know what I'm saying, 
like when I was watching that chicken interview. Chicken got millionaire buddies. Ed Stark got millionaire buddies. The millionaire buddies on the coasts and down south said, the reason, you know, is because you don't have the resources, bro. If you grew up in New York, there's 10 different labels. Every, yeah. there's, and there's just more shows, more things going on. Yeah. And then I look up and it's like, oh, live on Lake Street. So we got stuff going on now. Yeah. And, 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 and this is just one example. Yep. And so that's dope. The growth is dope. And I support that 110%. Um, but again, it's a valid question. If you're an artist in Minnesota, mm -hmm. singing, rapping, whatever, male, female, doesn't matter, you know, do, do you got to look around to, to really get the type of traction that you're looking for? Probably. Probably. But, but I do think that we are building, we're building a, a solid foundation here. And I do think. Uh, Absolutely. You know, I think the, the, the murder of George Floyd brought a lot of attention here. The reaction to the murder of George Floyd brought more attention here. Um, I gift think and a curse. Shit. Major, yeah, major gift and a curse. But I think you know we did get to nationally show like, hey, whatever y'all think it is they over here. They lit that police station on yeah, fire. <laughs> whatever the fuck you think it is over here, it ain't that. Yeah, and it's a little different over yeah, here. They, yeah, yeah, yeah. They knew it was real. I got people in New York and Vegas that had texted me when that happened, like. Y'all turned up. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yep. And we'll do it again. Yeah. Fuck around and we'll do yeah. it again. So, yeah, I, I think that that was a major, I think that made a major difference. And I think that it, I mean, I know for a fact it did put eyes on us. Mm -hmm. It did put eyes on us. I know the industry does look at us. We do so, have. So let's, let's talk about, let's go off that thing. It's putting eyes on us. Mm -hmm. So everything Ed Stark represent, talk about, rap about. Is black power. Yep. Okay? That's the brand. Yep. That's what I'm here for. Mm -hmm. That's the message in the music. And it comes natural it comes natural to me because that's like just who I am as a person. Yep. Like fuck the music. Even when I wasn't rapping like that, that's still who I was, but I wasn't doing it correctly. I had to be true to myself. Yeah. Now I'm doing that. Even with that message, the argument can be made, you still gotta leave Minnesota a little bit. Well, I think it's always important to move around, for sure. It's always important to move around. It's always important to visit other places, other areas. I think outside the one thing that we probably don't do enough is go outside the country. That's really where it's at. <laughs> outside the country is really where you can get it cracking for yourself, especially streaming-wise. Okay. They making that hard unless you, you True. know, they making that difficult unless you. Uh... It's a good transition. Unless, they making that unless you what unless you, uh, <laughs> uh, you decide to sacrifice your body and soul and your human rights. So yeah, you know if you uh, yeah, shit, it's hard to travel just domestically. Yeah, um, with everything they make you do. So you want to talk a little bit about the shirt? Yeah, man, I got this shirt. This you're not you're not getting you're not getting jabbed. Oh man, we're not getting jabbed over here. We never getting jabbed because we love our freedom and we know the difference between right and wrong and we know that uh forcing people to do things to their own body is wrong anyone who's a descendant of slavery should know that any good human should know that i'm not against the vaccine or the jabber there are plenty of people that need it and should get it mm -hmm. of their free will that's the key it's the free will part yeah that's the key so you're not an anti-vaxxer? No, not at all. No. Not at all. You know what I'm saying? I'm also, I'm also not. You not do, at all. You got to do what feels right to you, for you. I'm, a, I'm against forcing people to do things against their free will. And, and, then, and then it's deeper than that because in, in this disproportionately uh, affects black people, especially in Minnesota, because mm -hmm. Minnesota is a place where black people do not have a middle class. There is no black middle class in Minnesota, like if you go to Atlanta, for example, right? Yeah. So what, what's happening is people who need their jobs, right, were being forced, hey, lose your job or do this. Yeah. That's wrong. And it just so happens that the Supreme Court agrees with me because mm -hmm. they just shot that down uh, at a federal level. Yeah. So at a federal level, that's not going to fly. So that's a small victory in the war. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's dope. <clears throat> the only thing I'll say is I don't think I mean they make they might get to it, but like they're they're still not forcing us to do it. They're just 
they limiting, fire on people. They're limiting the thing. Yeah, they're, so they're limiting the things that we can do if we don't, which is, our, which is kind of a roundabout way. But like... But isn't that akin to Jim Crow? Isn't that akin to uh, institutional systemic racism? Because you're not, you know, hey, go pick that cotton, and, you know, right now. But in a roundabout way, there's a lot of restrictions I, I and get, a lot I, of. I get the comparison. I, I don't. It feels like maybe a little bit of a false equivalency. We mostly agree. Mm-hmm. I just don't know if I would go that far with it. But I get it. No. I, I hear you. I get it. Like, I know no. I get what you're saying. And, and I'm with you as far as like, I just don't personally, like, I'll never tell anybody what to do or not do. I will. But <laughs> I will. But it feels wrong to me. It, and it should. It doesn't come with a warning label with the ingredients. I don't know what that shit is. It, uh, well, and even if it did, I probably wouldn't know what most of it was. Right. What is going into my bloodstream? Right. I'm okay. I'm fine. I had COVID. Right. I, I lived. Too. I survived just yeah. fine. It sucked for a couple of days, and then I was good. <laughs> but I just can't see it making sense to put something like that in my bloodstream. It's the same reason I'm not going to do fucking heroin. I'm sure the feeling is ma- is amazing, mm-hmm. right? Getting high right. off heroin, probably amazing. Probably. I'm not going to do. I'm not. <laughs> I don't know what that shit is either, either. So I'm not doing I do that heroin either. before I put that in my body. You know why? Why? Be- because it's my choice. True. <laughs> Yeah, because 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 even if I am hurting myself, it's my choice as a as an American citizen, as an uh, adult. Yeah. With all his faculties intact yeah. to make that decision. Yeah. Yeah. I'm with you. I agree. So I agree. They're not forcing me to do shit. I'm not, I'm right. not doing it. And I'm and I'm blessed to be in a position where I don't have to. And that's the key right that there is, because is, you're self-employed. Yes. Right. Yep. And but a lot of people aren't and disproportionately black people aren't in that position. Yeah. You know, yep. so. Yeah, that's that's tough. That is yep. tough. It's tough. It's fu- I, I wish, uh, man, I wish we could just get over it. So I got I got one more. I got one more question for you. Yeah, hit me. What's the question? St. <laughs> Paul Rushmore. Your St. Paul Rushmore. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. Yeah. Oh. St. Paul. Oh man, that's your, your personal. So don't you don't gotta doesn't have to be correct. It just has to be your personal. Yikes, that's a lot of pressure, man. <laughs> that's pressure. Uh, I'd rather talk about politics. That's that's hot. Yeah, um, believe it or not, it is politics. Ah, uh, right. It's a different <laughs> different type of politics. You can put, okay. You can put yourself there if you want to. Oh, I'm definitely gonna do that because, um, I don't think that. Uh, let me not even make that comment because I don't know that to be true. But so, Ed Stark is right in the middle of the Rushmore. Shoulders poking out. Okay, fist up. Who else we gonna put on there? That's so tough, man. See, because the people that I want to put on there, I don't think they're technically from St. Paul. You know what I'm saying? I might know. Throw a name out there. I'll put <laughs> bro. All right, I'm gonna put Muja on there. Okay. I don't think he's from St. Paul. I don't but... think he is either, but he live in the hood right now. Yeah. So he live over West. But I'll put him on there only because he and here's why. Longevity. He's been around for a minute. For sure. And he consistent. Yep. And he good lyrically. And he he, you know, I'll put him up on there. Um I'ma put and see, and I'm gonna put someone who I don't even know personally, okay. but I'm gonna put him on there because before I started making music, he w- really had a bussing, uh, uh, online. Yep. And I seen a lot of his videos and stuff like that. It's this uh young cat named Tarzan. Yep. From the West Side. So he definitely should be on there. I'll put Tarzan on there. Not mad at you. And then um. Damn, man, who gonna put in that last spot though? And Tarzan definitely is from St. Paul. Right, from St. Paul. Yep. Um, I should probably put someone from the East Side just to keep it, you know, cohesive. I don't know. I'll, I'll put. I think. Um, again, I don't know this dude personally either, but I actually do. I'm familiar with his music and stuff like that. I'll put a uh, DB DB the roster. Solid. I'll put. I'll put him on. Solid. 
because I know he represented the East Side pretty tough. And he was on he was on our Rushmore as well. Well, was he? Yep, we had him. Oh, there. okay. Yeah. Well, there you go. Yeah. That's it then. No, that's a salt. That's a that's a see for how much you struggled to come up with them. That's a really good. Muja, I don't know. We'll let Muja is all. Muja is just Minnesota. But see, I'm biased too, though, and I will admit that because I don't listen to more of the newer stuff. Yeah. You know. But Which, that's what. But that's what Rushmore really is. Yeah. So that's a good like as far as like the Rushmore criteria. Great Rushmore. Yeah. That's a great Rushmore. Those yeah. are definitely names that need to be either on it or considered to be in it. And and just a personal peeve, and it's not again, it's not a right or wrong way of doing it. Just my personal peeve. If I Google your name. Mm-hmm. What's going to come up? Hmm. If I type your name into Spotify or Apple Music or any one of those platforms, what's going to come up? Because you don't have no business being on nobody's top list to absolutely nothing if you don't have a catalog. Hmm. Even if you have, you can have one song that went viral off, or you can have one, you could be Takashi, put out one song and it's 50 million billion views. That's one song. Yeah. So. It's okay. Well, let's end it with Google. Google. Google that shit. <laughs> Google. You want, can I Google o, if OG Ed Stark? Will that pull up? Oh, yeah. Because it it's going to come up with all my videos and my website and all the different blogs and everything. Okay. The only thing that does happen because my name is similar to... Ned Stark. Correct. Yes, sir. So <laughs> I have the unfortunate position of battling that yeah. with Google. So yeah. if, if you don't listen to rap ever or something like that, your algorithm's probably not set up for Ed Stark. Yeah. But yeah, my and shit's hard. Come up with Game of Thrones though. Hey, watch that too though. Yeah, Game of Thrones was great. On oh, my mama, that yeah, shit was great. Yeah, great. That shit fired. Well, <laughs> shit, man, this was a pleasure. This was fun. Good Except conversation. For the last season. <laughs> well, I don't even. Not even the last. Just the last few episodes. Yeah. Yeah. No, nah, I'm with you. Uh, so what? Are, what's the website? Uh, it's ogedstark.com. So Ed got two D's in it. So ogedstark.com. Check me out. Check out the blog. Check out the music. Uh, go, go make sure you like and subscribe to Ed Stark's Vivo channel. Mm-hmm. That's where you're going to find my latest joint 10, 10 toes down featuring Boosie Badass. Let's go. Shot by the great XD Media. On my mama. Shout out yep. to XD Media. Shout mm-hmm. out to Huey, man. He's been a big supporter. We fuck with him heavy. Oh, and yeah. He'll, and he'll be up here too. Oh, yeah. For sure. Yeah, I should have brought him with. <laughs> Not, hey. Yeah. For sure, man. Well, I appreciate the conversation. This was great. Yeah. And I'm going to be watching. See what you do next, man. All right. Appreciate it. Damn, what it? In high school, I let it bam, what it? I wasn't playing, what it? I'm coming straight out the south. Hey, genius, best watch your mouth. When I put up on PNB, right, then ain't he come out. You moving ounces, I just moved a hundred things in the drought. You want the south side, outside the fence of your house. You talking all that, then then wanna come talk it out. If you ain't talking money, f- you talking about. Like, if I could have, like, redid life, right, I probably should have went to school. I went to uh, school to be, uh, for psychology. I mm. probably should have went for architecture because I like to build things. Mm. Now, how I, that's why I say, like, I'm a pharaoh. I'm a builder. You yeah. see what I'm saying? Yep. And that's my black power shit. Yeah. But when I say I like to build things, I'm talking about the infrastructure. Yeah. So, and, and this is just me and my crazy shit and my OCD. I have a website, hmm. OGSstark.com. OGSstark.com. Go check that out. And so on that website, this is a legit website. Mm -hmm. Okay? If you look at this website, you're going to be like, oh, my God. Who is he signed to? Mm. You see what I'm saying? And that's what I do with everything I do. So if you look at the music videos, shout out XD Media, best uh, uh, videographer in the state, that shit is fire. You look at the quality of the songs, uh, all mixed and mastered by Dave Star, best producer in the state. Okay, this shit is quality. This is top tier. We operate at a level that is um, industry standard, right? Yep. So if you check me out online, that's what you're going to see. I like to build things. But then I'm so busy building these things, t- uh, going back to what you said, it was like I looked up and everything changed. Yeah. I wasn't, uh, you know, so that is, I, I agree with that. But I wasn't looking because I was busy building all this infrastructure, right? And so I'm building all this infrastructure, and I'm like, okay, I got this, I got the website, I got this going, I got this going, all my music's, you know, uh, I own all my masters, everything I've ever done, unless it was a feature for someone else. Mm -hmm. Everything I've ever put out, I own. You know, all that stuff. And that's a learning curve. When you're doing everything, when you finance your own music, when you 
uh, own your own recording studio, which I also got. That's something else I did because I was paying for studio time for a long time. And it's like, that's cool. And it's not that I have an issue with paying for studio time. It's that that limits my progress hmm. because I'm on someone else's time. I have to pay to practice. Yeah. It's like, I got to pay to practice. Let's have this, let's continue this conversation. Let me introduce you. Oh, yeah. Let me introduce you. Yeah. Another episode of Live on Lake Street. I'm, I'm